Hello everybody and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is the Sew Your Stash series number seven and I'm going to show you how I make my Tall Pines block. And I made this about three years ago and taught it at one of my scrappy retreats and we had so much fun with it because as you can see it's graduated squares so you can really use a lot of your stash from three and a half inch squares down and you can do it in scrappy colors like this to make it look kind of Christmassy or you could make them like my quilt that I made three years ago that I showed you in the opening of the video which is all greens so that could be just like for camping or summertime or pine forest or also work for fall and it also would be beautiful in just all fall colors so you had a fall quilt. So first I'm going to talk about the background. So even though I've used scrappy squares for my stash and then some one and a half inch by two and a half inch strips for the trunks, I've used the same background. So let me show you how I cut from the background. I've written some notes here on this notebook, so let me pull it up so that you can see that close in the screen. Can you see that whole thing there? And then you could take a screenshot if you'd like or write down the measurements. These are easy measurements, but there are a lot of them. So I just wanted to write those down so that you could see that. And so what you do is cut a three and a half inch by width of fabric strip. Now when I'm cutting a width of fabric strip, I have my fabric folded like this, so it's four layers, so I'm cutting four at a time. But I always line up my ruler with the fold here, and I don't worry about this edge because those are gonna be, you know, mostly cut off anyway. All I'm worried about is this and this, that it lines up with the ruler. This is a three and a half inch wide ruler, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut with the fabric across that. Um, this is one of my B Basics, one of my new B backgrounds, not B Basics, B backgrounds prints. And these are little circles in sea glass. And I think that's really cute. So I chose to use that for this quilt. And so now that I have those, that strip cut. What I'm gonna need to cut are for each block, so I'm gonna, I unfolded it so that I have two layers at a time. I need two three and a half inch squares. So I go ahead and cut two three and a half inch squares. Then the next measurement is still three and a half inches tall, but it's three inches wide. So that's two three inches by three and a half. So the common measurement in all of this is three and a half. So this is why it's easy to cut. So I've done two three and a half, two three. Now I'm gonna go down to two and a half by three and a half tall. Two inches by three and a half tall. and then one and a half by three and a half inch tall. And then for pieces F, I need two three inches tall by two and a half. So what I'll do is I'll just measure like this. And these are the pieces that go on the side of the trunk, the tree trunk. So those are two three inches tall by, oh wait, I just cut that two inches. Let me recut that, okay two and a half inches by three inches tall. It's a good thing I have my list here to look at. Okay. There we go. Okay, so these are for the sides of the trunks. So that's cutting for one full block. And this is how much, if you didn't make a mistake, this is how much you have left out of that three and a half inch strip. But I did figure the math out. And out of one strip, you can get one block with that little bit of leftover. But if you get a yard of fabric, that will do 12 blocks. So that's just kind of some quilty math so that you can know 
how much to buy if you're going to use the same background, depending on what size quilt or table runner or whatever you're going to do. So here is cutting for one block for the background. And now let's talk about the pieces. So you need, let me show you this, what I've got out on my design board. So I've got three and a half inch squares. You need two three and a half inch squares, two three inch squares, two two and a half inch squares, two two inch squares, and two one and a half inch squares. And that's for all of the tiers of the tree. And for the trunks, you need one and a half by two and a half inch pieces. Okay, so let me show you how I cut my squares. Basically, I get them out of my strips baskets. So here's like my one and a half, uh, an example for a one and a half inch strip, two and a half inch strip. And the one and a half, I'll just go ahead, usually I'll fold them in half because it's like if you're going to cut one, you might as well cut two at the same time. So I'll just lay that on there and I have one and a half inch squares. And I'll cut a bunch of those or I will use my easy corner triangle cutoffs. So he, here is my one and a half inch square bin and you see that I have a lot of these. And so this is kind of my go-to for scrappy. So I just will kind of rifle through that and grab a bunch of one and a half inch squares out of colors that I want to use for this block. So that takes care of the one and a half. Now the two and a half, I'll go ahead and cut a couple either out of my strips. They're already two and a half inch tall. So I just have to measure two and a half inch in. Another thing that comes in handy, you can use a larger ruler like this, or you can use actually the two and a half inch square ruler. So then I have those to work with. But the next size is I need a two inch as well. So I will use this little ruler and use the same strips to cut a bunch of two inch squares. So that's how I do my two inch squares out of my two and a half inch strips or my two and a half inch squares basket. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my three and a half. I'll cut a couple of three and a half inch squares. And then I will also use this ruler and put the three inch lines there and cut three inch squares as well. And so that's how I cut my scrappy squares. Before I cut, I go to my square bins first, like this is my three and a half one. And I'll grab, you know, several out of there in a different variety. And then I'll go to my strips and I'll just cut a bunch of squares. And I know I've told you before, but I love having pre-cut squares. They're used so much in so many things. And so now that I've got cut, for one block background, I'm gonna lay out these, some of these scrappy squares and we're gonna go over to the machine and I'll show you how I sew the tall pines block together. Here I am at my machine. Today I'm sewing with my Aqua Featherweight machine and this is Miss Patsy after Patsy Klein. My mint sewing machine that you have seen me sewn before with is called Miss Doris after Doris Day because she was one of my mom's favorite singers and actresses and so I thought it would be fun to name a machine after one of my dad's favorite singers who is Patsy Cline. As I was growing up he was always listening to Eddie Arnold and Patsy Cline you know that old country music and so this is Miss Patsy. So I have my Seam So Easy guide taped here on with washi tape. This center line lines up with the needle and this is my quarter inch seam allowance right here. And so now I have my block laid out. I want to show you how I do it. So here are my background pieces from the three and a half to three by three and a half, two and a half by three and a half, two, and the one and a half. They're all three and a half inches wide. They just have different heights. So now those squares line up 
with a background piece. So the three inch squares, of course, go with the three inch tall ones. The two and a half go with the two and a half tall. The two inch squares go with the two inch and the one and a half goes with the one and a half inches tall. So I lay them out like this, right side up. This is one background on each side for the tree, just so that I can see the color placement. I know I'm sewing scrappy, but this is kind of a plan scrappy. Each block I just pull out and lay out, and that's just kind of how I like to do it. If I don't like this one, then I'll grab another one and replace it until I'm happy. So once I have them laid out, then I'll go ahead and flip them over with right sides together so that I remember when it's time to sew them that they'll be all right sides together. So I go ahead and do that. I don't have to really have them straight till I get them to the machine. But you can see on this tree that there's different angles right here. We're going to be sewing easy corner triangles. So this one goes this way and this one goes this way. So how I remember and why I lay them out on my design board like this is I remember that the inside corner I go out, this inside corner I sew out. So this is how I'm sewing that direction. And so I just pick it up from my design board and start sewing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew. I don't really wanna talk over the machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew and you can see how I do it. And then I'll be going over here to press and you'll be able to see that as well. So I just line it up right here, make sure everything is lined up, start in the corner here, and this corner lines up with the center. And this way I don't have to mark my squares. I always have a scrappy fabric that goes in between. And then I'll go ahead and pick it up and I remember that I'm sewing this from the other angle. Okay, I'm just gonna continue on doing that with each size rectangle and square. Okay, so I've trimmed everything but these large ones. Now, I just wanted to show you that I get a lot of my squares when I trim easy corner triangles, meaning what I'll do is, these are too small, I can tell you that now, but I'll take like my one and a half inch ruler and I'll see if I can get a one and a half inch square out of them, and I cannot out of these. But I do know that I can out of these three and a half ones and so what I'll do with that is I just just like normal I'll trim off you know an approximate one quarter inch seam allowance and then I'll put these in a pile and when I'm finished with my project before I put them away I keep these right sides together I have in the past you know sewn down here and then trimmed them down and just made a whole bunch of half square triangles. But unless I know a specific project that I'm doing with that, I don't do that anymore because I just found out I just had a whole bunch of half square triangles that I really had to find something to do with them. And I'm much better off just cutting a square. They're leftovers anyway. First of all, the first square was a leftover. Now this is a leftover, but I'm going to be able to cut it two one and a half inch squares out of both fabrics here and then I'll add them to my bins and that's how I reuse again so I kind of do double leftovers that way. So I'll set those aside for later. I just wanted to show you that and then I'm going to go ahead and press these 
all towards the printed triangle. Okay, so now when I have two pieces pressed that are the same size, I'm simply going to put them right sides together just like this, and this is the first top piece, and go ahead and sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I've had a lot of people ask me if I do an exact quarter inch or a scant. I like to do an exact, but you know, depending on your style of sewing, that's fine. With my seam, seam guide, you can do a scant by going just inside the blue, or you can do an exact by going down the center. So however you wanna do it. I like to cut exact and sew exact, and, and uh, the math usually works out because math doesn't lie. So if you've cut accurately, and then you do an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, and you press accurately, you should be okay and good to go. Now at this point, I am going to press the seams open for less bulk. So I just grab my roller and roll them first and then give them a quick press with the iron. Here I am over to pressing, and I do not do these open. I don't want to press down onto this point, so I press all of these blocks up towards the top of the tree. And then this is where I really do like to use the clappers. So I do a quick press to set the seams. It just kind of makes them flatter. See how much flatter that is? And then I go ahead and get that pressed up. Let me slide this one over so you can see this. Now with the tree trunk section, I do like to press towards the tree trunk. I'll let them cool off with the clapper for just a minute. The clapper, again, I know I've told you this before, but in case you're new to my channel, this absorbs the heat faster because of the type of wood that it is. 
and so your block cools off. I shouldn't say dries because I don't use any steam, so it cools off faster so that it stays flat when it cools off. And sometimes I'll even just turn the clapper over and I can feel how warm this is and so that it can absorb some more heat. This really helps. Yeah, that's pretty warm. And then I'll just go ahead and sew the block together. Okay, now I flipped this over because I don't think I explained that before, but I like to sew with my point up. If I had sewed with this piece up, I wouldn't be able to see the point underneath here. And I know if I'm running over my points or not. Okay. Darn, I can see at the very end I just ran out of bobbin. So I'm going to change my bobbin, finish up the block, and I'll be right back. I fixed my bobbin, and here I am with my finished block. And it, right now it measures six and a half wide by 12 and a half inches tall. And this is what the back looks like. Now, about the 12 and a half inches tall, because you have a lot of seams, Sometimes it may be a little bit taller. If that's true and you need to trim it down, just trim it down from the trunk end so that you're not gonna cut your points off here. That's just if it's too tall. But I love this Tall Pines block. There's just a lot of different things you can do with it. You can do a quilt like I did. You can do table runners. You could make four of these and just put them next to each other and it would be uh, cute rectangle pillow or you could do as many wide as you wanted to do and two rows to do a 24 inch pillow it's really fun I love how it looks Christmassy or woodsy if it's all in greens or you know it's just the choice is yours so now when you sew them together in a table runner you could just do it single like this and have a 12 inch tall table runner and then just add as many trees as you want wide. And what's kind of fun about this block is you can, here, let me grab this and stick it on the design board. Let me grab this one. This is a bigger design board so I can show more, but you could turn one block upside down and just literally sew them right together. A lot of times when I do table runners, I like to do right side up, upside down, right side up, so that you can see it depending on you where you are on the table, whether it's right side up or upside down with you. But because there's a lot of space on the sides here, when you sew the blocks together that way, you could just simply just keep going and then put binding around it and make as long of a runner as you'd like to. Because it's only 12 inches tall, it would be awesome on the uh, top of my piano or my mantle or even just hung above the sofa as a short, wide quilt. If you're going to do a quilt, you could do sashings in between, which is what I did. I cut sashings in between from the background fabric and of course I cut them one and a half inches wide and, and uh, 12 and a half inches tall. And then when I sewed the rows together, I cut two and a half inch sashings between the rows. But um, you can do whatever you want. That's the whole point of this scrappy, um, you know, sewing from the scrappy baskets from the Sew From Your Stash series, is I just want you to be able to take each of these blocks, give you the measurements, show you how I sew them together, and then let you run with the possibilities. So I hope you've really enjoyed making this block with me today. I've enjoyed having you here with me in my sewing room and I will be back next week where I'm doing a special video showing you uh, my next fabric collection coming up and about a couple of sew-alongs. So I'll chat with you later.